Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics episode 2. In this episode I'll be going over systems which are the logic that runs on the components inside your game. Uh, in Bevy there is basically three types of system that you can uh, write. The basic system that is more or less just a function that returns nothing and uses specific parameters. Then there's an ex uh, exclusive system, which is something that it took me a while to find, that is a system that has direct world access and so is much more flexible when it comes to programming, but less flexible when it comes to parallelization. So you only want to use this if you don't know what you might need access to and that what you need access to might change at runtime and you would instead want to use a basic system for functions that know what they um are going to need and then there are chain systems which are not necessarily systems running back to back like you would think but apparently larger systems created by uh chaining together in a sequence some functions and this results in the output of the first one getting fed into the input of the second one but still having access to uh, resources and queries and other world access that I would assume would be allow for more parallelization because you can uh, access things in the first one that might take a while to run and then quickly hand over the information to the second one that will then access the mutable versions and edit them there. I'm not entirely sure if that works just from my uh, testing. You can access world stuff separately. Uh, so basically in Bevy you have startup systems as a way of adding systems that only run once. You then have normal systems which will run in every frame and then you will have uh, staged systems which will run at a specific point. Adding a system adds it by default to the uh, update stage but you can, by doing something like this, add it to a specific stage. This applies both for the setup and the normal systems, uh, but setup systems have a different set of stages being pre-setup, setup, and post-setup. When the uh, setup stages for a regular game without you adding your own custom ones is first uh, pre-update, update, update post update and last as i've done here i've got a first system that will run on the first stage and a last system that will run on the last stage the setup system that i've got here will just print setup the uh, basic system will print press space bar and accesses the input via a, an input parameter the exclusive system here takes a mutable world as an input and will then access the input internally like so by getting a resource and unwrapping which means that the exclusive system can't run at the same time as any other system because there's no way for the uh, scheduler to know which uh, resources and queries you are running because you are directly building them in code uh, and then this one just outputs directly um, from world that it got the input then first and last just print first and last and then I've made a simple chain here that reads a numpad input and adds that to a local variable in the first function and then passes the result uh, to the uh, output which the second one will take in and then if the, its local variable is different to the input it receives uh, it will print the time and then the value inputted this is all very simple uh, functionality for Bevy and isn't using things like queries or anything like that yet. But a system can accept uh, up to 16 inputs and can include tuples that can also be up to 16 inputs long, allowing for infinite chaining if you want to nest it right, like if you really need like a hundred different components. Um, uh, resource accesses you could 
in theory chain them together so that you have a, like a um a tuple with 16 16 wide tuples in it all requesting different resources it should all compile but inside a um a system you can uh have as input parameters any combination of uh, uh you can have commands which allow you to manipulate the world using commands these will be applied at the end of the stage i believe so any changes made using commands in a system cannot be accessed by another system until the next frame unless i believe if this uh, system is on a stage that runs after it then does have access so something that happens in the first stage can be read in the last stage but something done in the first stage will not be seen by anything else done in the first stage uh, then you can also get resources, which is done by doing res and then requesting the resource. Uh, you can then also do res mute, which you would probably want to be muted. But... And then this probably won't work because it's requesting both time as mutably and as not mutably. But res mute will uh, return a mutable reference. To a resource you can also do um, optional resources which are done so option uh, you can request optional resources which will return none if the resource doesn't exist and some if the resource does this is useful for if you have a system that Mates only run on a condition flagged by something else is you could insert a um, unit resource that it then checks to see if it exists and it only runs its um, functionality if it does exist and then removes it or some kind of system that might run and initialize the resource if it doesn't exist but not run if it does exist or do something differently if it does exist so maybe loading from a file uh, things like that might be done in a wrapped option so that you don't load the file every time you only load the file if the resource doesn't exist you can also do queries which gives you access to components in the world so you would say query and again uh, i'll have individual videos on going into more detail into resources and queries in the future but you basically have a query at which you would say i want all the uh components of uh oh, nothing's not this public um all the components with a transform and that will give you a query to all entity with transforms and it'll give you access to that transform this in this arrangement it is um mutable but uh, not uh, it's, it's immutable but you can do mute which will then give you mutable access to the transform but mean that your system can't run in parallel with any other system that is also accessing mutable transforms you can get around this by adding filters which work like so um do i color so th this would only get you mutable transforms with UI color, and there's also uh, without and uh, changed, which again, all filtered respective by their name and will allow systems to run if they don't conflict. So if you had a system that was getting all transforms with something and then a system that got all transforms without, they no longer conflict because it's impossible for them to both be accessing the same transform at the same time because something cannot have with and without the same thing uh what else can you get you can get um events which come in the form of an event reader and that will read 
like uh, all mouse button events and you can also get an event uh, writer which an event writer will allow you to output events from a system and that other systems will receive there is also um components that are oh, uh, types that you can get that are like more niche that i haven't actually done any looking into but there is not send uh not send mute uh entities components bundles uh types and system check ticks which are all low level things except send and thing that let you um access more low level information about the uh entity component system uh and not send and not sync i believe just let you specify that basically get a version of this that will always run on the main thread so if you had some kind of um io accessing thing i i believe you'd have to put that non send non sync cuz it can't be sent across threads so it must always be running the main thread so you would use non send non sync i believe that's everything for today i'll quickly run through these systems uh when i actually launch the game here uh but do tell me if there's anything i've missed and i'll uh either do a updated video or a correction in the future uh i'm fairly novice when it comes to bevy like i have a somewhat of an understanding because i've been using it for the last year but Things like the um, exclusive system, I only somewhat recently found, and it's not exactly well documented. And chaining, I only just found out today how it works in respective to, it's not just two systems that follow each other, it's two systems that become one so that they can actually have input parameters that are different. This, I just had to quickly uh, change my code because originally it was um, using debug and I don't have the logging plugin active. But as you can see in my console getting spammed here, uh, it's printing first, last, first, last. Uh, and when I actually close the game, it should, yeah, it'll end with the last because it's printing those systems. Uh, anyway, just a quick um, summary of the system that I was showing is as you can see down here in the uh, console output, it's outputting the time and the input, which is the value that it's receiving from the previous system. And that's how you chain them together in such a way that one accesses the keyboard input, the other accesses the time. So those systems, if they took longer than a fraction of a second, could be running in the background with other systems that might need time and so they wouldn't bog it down and they only need it for a second. It would be useful to generate the mesh or multiple meshes and then chain them into a function that just puts the mesh in the assets so that the assets resource can be freed mutably because it's not needed mutably until you right at the end. So that would be a good use of that chaining system if it works under the hood how I think it does. But again, any corrections would be greatly appreciated. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.